gentleman from New York is recognized. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let's all be honest with each other. Uh, we are here today, right now, because of anti-Semitic rhetoric from one member of this chamber said again and again and again. We would not be on this floor right now otherwise to discuss this topic. If that member was a Republican, that member's name would be in this resolution, and this resolution would be all about condemning anti-Semitism, and it would be done so forcefully. That member in January had to apologize for talking about a hypnosis of Israel that they have over the entire world. That member had to apologize in February by saying that if you support Israel, it must be because you're bought off by Jews. That member called it an unequivocal apology, even though she filled it with equivocation. And now we're back again, this time by saying that if you support the U.S.-Israel relationship, that you must have pledged allegiance to a foreign government. Except this time, that member is refusing to apologize. Even if you gave that member every benefit of the doubt that she had no idea what she was doing, why now wouldn't she be apologizing? Why would she be more emboldened to refuse an apology altogether? I apparently uh, am giving Rep. Omar more credit than uh, the speaker is, because I don't believe she is naive. I believe that she knows exactly what she's doing. It is an American value, by the way, to have reasonable, legitimate criticism of a government, whether it be the U.S. government, Israel, or any other government. It is not an American value, though, to be hurling anti-Semitic rhetoric. Anti-Semitism must be condemned unequivocally and emphatically. We have members of this chamber who associate with Louis Farrakhan who says, quote, Hitler was a very great man. Let's talk about a double standard. In January, we all came to this chamber. We condemned white supremacy. We named a Republican member. We kicked that member off of his committees. He can't serve on the Small Business Committee, but this member will continue to serve on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. But no, now we can't come here and just emphatically, solely, forcefully condemn anti-Semitism and name names, but if it was a Republican, we would. It's time to call out these statements for what they are. Pointed, bigoted, unreasonable, illegitimate, anti-Semitic. I commend my colleagues on the other side of the aisle who have been speaking out about all this anti-Semitism. A few members come to mind. Chairman Engel, Congressman Deutsch, Congressman Nadler, Congresswoman Lowy, Congressman Gottheimer. Many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, I believe to their core, know how very wrong this is, and there are many other members to name as well. And I'd be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of them, because support of Israel, support of Jews, standing against anti-Semitism has been bipartisan in the past. It should be bipartisan today, and should be bipartisan for every moment in the future. I yield back. The gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't know where to begin. I really don't. As members of Congress, duly elected by constituencies to serve in this body, who come here with the, the hope and the thought that we exchange ideas and come to this body to actually participate, and for the second time, in eight weeks, I am here with my friend from New York debating a resolution that all of us should have learned in kindergarten. Be nice. Don't hate. This resolution doesn't need to be seven pages. It's just wordy. I agree with it. We don't need to hate. It don't matter where it comes from. But it's just what bothers me the most, Mr. Speaker, is what I'm finding right here. Just the other day in this floor, we celebrated the institution of this body with the uh, dean of the house. And we spoke of, of Mr. Dingle, we spoke of uh, Don Young, and we spoke about this institution of this house. What is becoming more and more concerning for me about this process and what breaks my heart as much as into anti-Semitic thought, into anti-Muslim thought, into anti-anybody thought, is that we have broken down in this house. Last week we brought to the floor in which they must, a bill in which was supposed to be about firearms, which the, my friends across the aisle were mistakenly didn't understand the penalty associated with the bill. Today, yesterday, I was just on the floor of this house talking about a bill that really, because they rushed it through committee, came to the floor of this house in which if you keep a four-year-old from voting, you're a criminal. 
This is what happens when we rush. And this week, the entire week, almost, has been taken up by sentiments of a member that were anti-Semitic. Repeating, as Rahm Emanuel said, some of the ugliest stereotypes that we've had. But goes back to, again, my concern here. At 3.20 this afternoon, I was handed, or at least was printed, one of the resolutions. I have three more of this resolution that it's taken all week. How long does it take to figure out just don't hate? How many times, how many, how many you know, pages does it take to cite ill and evil? Evil is evil. My heart breaks, Mr. Speaker. My heart breaks for this institution. When we say that it's something, we see something that is anti-Semitic, but we say, well, they may not have known it was. It's anti-Semitic. It's anti-Muslim. It's whatever you want to call it. It's just wrong. My heart breaks. And then I find out that we've changed it now lately is to add other groups in here who undoubtedly saw they wasn't a part of the groups. So we added in new groups to the list. I guess since we're at it, why didn't we add Mormons? Why didn't we add Jehovah's Witnesses? They've been attacked. Mormons have many times been accused of dual allegiance. Ask a former presidential candidate. <laughs> Miss Speaker, I, I wish I could, you and I could engage in a colloquy. You're a good gentleman from North Carolina. Explain this to me. Why it took a whole week to figure out to say, Hate is hate. You don't need seven pages. We need people to understand that words have consequences, that being a member of Congress matters, that being a member of Congress says that when you say stuff, we can debate civilly. My friend from New York and Maryland, we disagree on most anything. We could probably disagree about the color of, or how many clouds are in the sky, about policy. But it is not a disagreement that hate is hate. And we shouldn't overlook it and try and lump it with everything else and give moral equivalency. But here we are again. Here we are again. Mr. Speaker, I hope we're not here in another four weeks because the first eight weeks we've been here twice. Please let us get back to being the people that this country needs us to be. With that, I reserve. The gentleman reserve. I think I know a little bit about discrimination. I face it every single day. I carry multiple identities that are constantly, constantly being discriminated against. I thank um, the author for thinking about this particular bill, but I am saddened by the particular purpose I believe this bill serves. Some of the members in this room have spoken to and would like to believe that this is a particular bill that is to support the Jewish community. Some would even think that this is a great bill because we are a body that is fighting against discrimination. If those two things were true, there would have been a great support for Representative Hornstein's amendment. I believe that this is 
the kind of thing we bring forth so that we create more division. We further a narrative that says particular people's concerns, the oppressions that they may feel, the ways that they might see they might want to use their freedoms in order to oppose a government that they might feel is oppressing is not okay. And they don't have a right to do so. As many of you know, I come from Africa. And um, I wasn't old enough to know all that was happening in South Africa when the apartheid was prevalent there, when South Africa was an apartheid state. But I remember my grandfather talking to me about the stories of apartheid South Africa and telling me how that conversation shifted because so many people of conscience, so many people who, understand that, who understood that it was obviously immoral for countries to continue to support South Africa have decided that they were going to engage in boycotts of that government so that that system would go down. And so what we might see today and what we might not agree with, because it is not a popular discourse, might actually be a reality that some people might be living in. And we here in Minnesota certainly in this body, who are not educated enough to understand the nuances of the people who are living in Israel and Palestine are going through, should not be having these conversations about what is appropriate and what it isn't. I certainly never advocate for any kind of discrimination. I never will. But what I do advocate for is for all of us to work towards furthering peace in the world. And I do believe that you never get to having peace without justice. That is a fundamental thing that first must happen before we further peace. We know, and I'm certainly saddened by the rise of anti-Semitism, and I have been part of a community that has been raising funds to support the Jewish community in this time of need. Because as my community is struggling with the particular ban that our president wants to put on us, the Jewish community has been side by side fighting with us, making sure that we have the resources that we need. Because I think there is a particular connection and brotherhood and sisterhood that Muslims and Jews have. One that is fundamentally based in our shared space in history, our shared land, and one that we will never forget. But what governments do and what is based in systems are very different. They truly are. And so I oppose this bill. I would love to have voted for a bill that would have expanded our ideals of fighting against discrimination in being a body that actually stood up against all discrimination. I don't want to be part of a vote that limits the ability for people to fight towards that justice and peace. Thank you.